Hey, welcome to Springs Kids. I'm Devin. And I'm Vicki. We are so glad you're joining us today. If you are in grade one all the way up to grade six, this is for you. We'd love to have you check out one of our G-Force classes in Winnipeg or Calgary. You'll have so much fun playing fun games, doing praise and worship, and learning a brand new lesson from the Bible every single week. Each week at G-Force, we talk about something really important to us, laugh. Now we spell it a bit differently. Here we spell it L-A-F, because each letter stands for something that's really important to us. L stands for love. We want to make sure we are loving others the same way that Jesus first loved us. Devin, what does A stand for? Devin, where'd you go? A stands for accept. Everybody was created differently and we all have different likes and dislikes. For example, I love the Winnipeg Jets hockey team and I think they're the best team ever. However, I like the Calgary Flames hockey team and I think they're the best ever. Do you guys think that Vicky and I can still be friends even though we don't like the same hockey team? Can we accept each other? We absolutely can be friends and it's because we accept each other and the fact that we have different favorite hockey teams. The last letter is F and it stands for forgive. Everyone makes mistakes and it's important that when we make mistakes we are quick to forgive because we love one another. We've got a super fun lesson this week and I can't wait for you to see it. Let's start by getting into our Bible challenge. This month, we're talking about responsibility. Responsibility is showing that you can be trusted with what's expected of you. When you're young, you have to be responsible at home and at school. As you get older, you get more and more responsibilities. That's why it's important to learn how to be trusted with what's expected of you now, so you can be responsible even more when you're older. Let's take a look at what the Bible has to say about responsibility. This month, our Bible verse comes from Luke 16.10. It says, Whoever can be trusted with small things can also be trusted with large things. Whoever is dishonest in little things will be dishonest in large things too. When you work hard with something small, you never know. You might end up with an even bigger responsibility and the chance to make an even bigger difference. Now it's time to get up and Get ready for one of my favorite parts of service. That's praise and worship. Let's do it.
orange. Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about responsibility. While we take a look at the most important thing of all time. If you were a fish, which one of these would you choose? Hmm. Maybe that's not the most important thing of all time. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about responsibility. Which is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. I expect you're gonna tell me what these are about? Aquarium plants. Wait, you got a fish? I got a fish. For Christmas? Christmas will live on all year in my new ichthyoid friend. Ichthyoid means fish-like. Fish are super easy to take care of, right? I mean, aquarium, fish food, done. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's not that simple? Let's just say that taking care of a fish looks a bit more like this. I can't even... You need all of this for one tiny fish? One tiny fish, AKA Finn. Finn, meet Carter, Carter, Finn. Finn, huh? Yeah, pretty good, right? Nah, but I see what you did there. What does all this stuff do? Oh, uh, well, the water conditioner removes metals and chlorine from the water. And betas are tropical fish, so this guy needs a heater to keep the water warm. And of course, you've got to check the water temperature. Isn't that a meat thermometer? It works really well. But mom did use this to check some baked salmon the other day, so... That does not seem right. Finn is a super picky eater, so I give him bloodworms as a treat. <sighs> but he is super cute. Aquarium test strips? Okay, see, this is the complicated part. It wasn't complicated already? When you first set up an aquarium, it has to cycle. That cannot mean what I'm thinking. The tank has to establish a nitrogen cycle. See, fish waste and extra food decompose, creating ammonia. Ammonia is poisonous to fish, but over time, Good bacteria grow inside your aquarium. They break down the ammonia into nitrite and nitrate, which still aren't great for your fish. But when algae grows in your tank, it eats the nitrate as food. So how long does it take for this whole nitrogen cycle thing to work? Two months. Two months? How's Finn going to make it? Well, I gotta test for nitrogen and ammonia every day and do lots of water changes. That sounds like a lot of work. Finn is totally worth it, I think. Well, I certainly hope little fish face here feels the love. Speaking of love, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of four books called the Gospels. These books tell stories from the life of Jesus. Matthew was written down by, you guessed it, Matthew, one of Jesus' followers, a tax collector whose life was turned upside down by his friendship with Jesus. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds gathered. Some people were desperate to be made well. Others came to hear his teaching. But the religious leaders were troubled by Jesus and feared that he would change things. So some of the leaders tried to trap Jesus. They asked him trick questions, hoping to prove him wrong or stir up the crowds. But Jesus always knew the wise way to respond. Which is where our story starts. Hey, hey everyone, I'm Brian. So the religious leaders had become more and more worried about Jesus and his teaching. When Jesus entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival, great crowds welcomed him as a king. So those religious leaders began making plans to arrest him and uh, amped up their attempts to trick him. Who told you to do all these things? Yeah, what gives you the right? In every case, Jesus avoided their traps and gave wise answers. When one group of leaders failed to catch Jesus in his own words, another group, the Pharisees, decided to give it a try. One of their best law experts stepped up to test Jesus. The teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law? Ha! 
Whichever rule Jesus picks as the most important, he'll have to leave out the other 612 laws. Then we can get everyone mad at him for choosing the wrong one. Yes. I love it when a plan comes together. But Jesus just answered wisely once again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the Law and the Prophets is based on these two commandments. Okay, you see the amazing thing Jesus did there? He said that when you show love to God and show love to people, you will also be following all the other laws. If you love God and love others, you'll grow in telling the truth, in obeying your parents, in treating others well. Jesus didn't leave anything out. He included every single law in those first two. Love God, love others. It's that simple. But that doesn't mean it's easy all the time. See, God doesn't want us to just check off a list of rules every day. Hey, what do I do now? When we follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to be with us and guide us. Over time, we can learn to listen and discover fresh ways each day to love God and love others. There are unlimited ways we can do that. But here's a place to start. You can show love to God by spending time with God. You can read God's word in the Bible and tell God about all the great things and all the hard things in your life. One of the most amazing ways we can show love to God is actually by showing love to others, people made in God's very own image. You can show love to others by sharing what you have. And this might be your stuff, but it could also be your time, your listening ear, or your ideas and your creativity. You can show love by working hard to help others, your parents, siblings, friends, teacher, anybody you see who needs your help. You can also show love by using your words wisely to encourage others. Let's take a look at Jesus' words one more time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Just as Jesus said, when we focus on those two commandments, we can know that we are following all of God's laws. The end. Wow, Jesus made it so simple, but so not easy. Exactly, being in right relationship with God isn't about a bunch of rules. So what's our part in the story? We're designed to need God moment by moment, so we can discover what it looks like to love God and love others. There are several awesome ways to show love to God. The first is giving God your time. You can read God's words recorded in the Bible. And you can tell God anything that's on your heart or mind. You can even sing to God. Yeah, that's right. Another awesome way to show love to God is to love others. And this is where you have to really pay attention because everybody's different. We all enjoy gifts, but some people feel extra loved if you make them a card or bake them cookies. Some people feel loved when you hang out with them and spend time doing their favorite stuff. For reals, my dad likes to fish, which is not my thing, but I do it anyway because I know it's super important to him. There's some people who feel most loved with a high five or a hug. And some people most need you to encourage them and say something you appreciate about them. There are also people who really feel loved when you do something for them. Like when you unload the dishwasher when it's your brother's turn. Or make sandwiches for dinner so your mom or dad don't have to cook. Just use your imagination. There's always some way that you can show love to God and to others. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Love God and love others. And love the creatures God made. Can we feed them again? No way, no how. But it was really fun to watch him slurp those worms up like spaghetti. Never overfeed a fish. But we can entertain him. Oh. With my new beta playlist. Look, he's dancing, he's grooving, look. Go fish, go fish. Oh, that's right. oh. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Just
got it? That's right. That's why you... Okay. Now I see. Gotcha. Raise the game. Come on, raise the game. Are you ready? He gives us everything we could ever need To love the world around us To be a light in darkness He's with us every breath He's with us every step So we can leave fear in the dust behind us If you wanna raise the game He will give you strength To reach another level in Gives us everything we could ever need To love the world around us To be a light in darkness He's with us every breath He's with us every step So we can leave fear in the dust behind us If you wanna raise the game He will give you strength To reach another level in Jesus' name If you wanna raise the game Making it, making it loud. We're making it loud. We're not afraid. We are moving up, moving up. We are making it, making it loud. We're making it loud. Let's raise the game. We're not afraid. Maybe you're listening today and you're wondering who this God person is that we're talking about. If that's you, I want to tell you that God loves you so much that he wanted to have a relationship with you. That's right, the creator of the universe wanted to have a relationship with you. But you see, there was a problem. We all have sinned. Now sin is the unkind and wrong choices that we make. And that sin separated us from a relationship with God. Think of this sin almost like chains or handcuffs that were keeping us away from God. But God had a plan and he sent us the best present ever. His only son, Jesus, came here to live in this world and live a perfect life with absolutely no sin. That's right, Jesus never made a mistake. And he loved us so much that he went to the cross and he died and came back to life to forgive all of us. And because he did this, we are forgiven for all of the sin that we'd ever do in our lives. Now, it might help you to think about it like this. When Jesus died and came back to life, he became the key that unlocked those chains that sin had put us in. Because of what Jesus did for us, we no longer had to be separated from him. 
Jesus did this because he loves us so much that he wanted to have a relationship with us too. But you know what? He won't force his way into your life. You get to make that choice. And if you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, you can do it in three easy steps. We do it like this, A, B, C. The first is to admit. Admit that you've sinned and made mistakes. B is believe. Believe that Jesus is God's son and that his death and resurrection paid for your sins. And C is to choose to live a life for Jesus. When you choose to start a relationship with Jesus, he goes with you everywhere because he wants to make sure that you live the best life ever. Now we're gonna pray all together. And if you wanna begin this relationship with Jesus, all you have to do is repeat these words after me and believe it with your heart. Dear Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want to be your friend forever. Forgive me of every mistake that I've made. I choose to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. That is so awesome. You know, if you made that choice today to start a relationship with Jesus, don't keep it to yourself. Tell an adult in your life because that is the most incredible choice that you could ever make. And you know what? When you've told that adult in your life, ask them to email us at kids at springschurch.com or reach out to us on social media because we would love to give you a Bible and tell you a little bit more about that choice you made. Also ask that adult to subscribe to the Springs Kids YouTube channel to make sure you can keep watching these lessons and learn more about God. Well, you know what? I've had so much fun here with you guys. I can't wait to see you next week.